yourself, but don't think the way I'm approaching the market and, and even the stocks I'm investing in would be appropriate for you. Just I'm always going to say that just to remind you, but it's it's really important to understand that. Um, but anyway, 50 to 100%. And it's important, like when you're striving for t- returns like that, at least as an individual investor, it's um, it's not, you don't get that every year, right? It's, it's lumpy returns. You know, I, there may be years where I don't get to 50%, and then, but there's going to be windfall years. And every once in a while, you start to, like, is that windfall year going to come? Or are those years going to come? But they inevitably do. And I think that speaks to the aspect of, uh, of value and why part of the reason I think it's going to persist. I mean, it's it's grounded in human biases, which in turn is grounded in our evolution. I, I think that's going to sustain for a bit. I know algorithms and robots and stuff. You got to keep an open mind about this, but and I'm biased. But uh, anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm going off topic again. So um, lumpy returns, but also I need to uh, I need to take on a lot of risk to achieve retain, returns like that. And so one way I do that is, I mean, I'm generally looking for uh, two to four baggers in a typical market in five to 10 baggers in a bear market. And of course, you know, that means I'm often dealing in shit, right? So I, I uh, classically speak, I mean, I'll probably be better um, classified as a, um, uh, a deep value investor, right? Um, but I... Uh, yeah, those are what you need to invest in. So those those questionable stocks, the ones that have a lot of hair on it, if you want to achieve outsized returns, at least as an individual investor. If you have other ways to do it as an individual investor, I keep an open mind about this. And um, so share your share your thoughts. Um, most things are not sustainable. Most processes that I come across doesn't mean I've seen everything, but um, that's how I go about it. And and so I say I use tactical analysis, right? My biggest wins are when the chart lo- the, t- the chart looks like shit. Uh, it's, that probably goes without saying, but uh, when no one wants to buy it and it looks like it's going bankrupt or it's, it's dead, then you dig in deep. That's when you really dig in deep and you just need to assess, is this company going bankrupt? Can it survive another year? Because that's when you make the most money. When perceptions go from the company's dead to, oh shit, maybe it's going to survive another year or two.